Good evening and welcome to the WDSU News Hot Seat. I'm Travers Mackle. Last week, we had one of the biggest political bombshells in recent times in this area. Sheriff Newell Norman from Jefferson Parish, there he is right there on the screen, announced his retirement effective August 31st. He's not seeking higher office. He's not just retiring. He will become a radio talk show host. The man who will replace him right there on your screen, Chief Deputy Joseph Lapinto, a former state representative. Tonight on the hot seat, we have state representative, or excuse me, former state representative, current Chief Deputy Joe Lapinto. Thanks for being here. Thank you. So first off, how big of a surprise was this to you? Because a lot of people in Jefferson Parish, given the fact that that Newell Norman is arguably the most powerful politician in that parish. We're surprised. How surprising was this to you? Extremely. Um, I, I had no idea that this day was coming. Sunday afternoon, myself, my wife, and Sean and, and the sheriff uh, went to dinner. He asked me on Friday to go to casual dinner, which is not unusual, and that's what we were going to do. Uh, after about 15 minutes of pleasantries, he decided to tell me that this was going to happen on Tuesday. Uh, so my life kind of changed Sunday afternoon at about 7 o'clock at night. Um, the week has been tremendous since then, but that's, that's when it happened. The sheriff had indicated at his press conference last week that he had planned to not seek re-election coming up in 2019, which is very interesting given the fact that this is somebody who has broad support. He won with almost 90% of the vote in 7, 11, and 15. Most people thought you would be the guy pegged to replace him in 2019, but does this move everything up for you given the fact that he's leaving two years early? It has to. I mean, it wasn't part of my plan. Uh, the sheriff has had a distinguished career in law enforcement, served 40 years in law enforcement. Um, truthfully, with his retirement, he was working for free every day. He came to this job because he enjoyed this job, but he could stay at home and make He'll the He'll get 100% of his pension. 100%, he can stay at home and do it. I knew this day would come. Uh, I thought it would be in 2019 or to his end of his term in 2020. Obviously did not expect it to be this soon uh, by any means, but uh, he got a job offer that he was intrigued by and decided to take. Like I mentioned earlier, you're a former state representative elected, elected also in 7, 11, and 15. You left the Louisiana legislature to take the job as chief legal counsel to the sheriff and then were promoted to chief deputy. Are you ready for something like this? You know, I'm a policeman. I've always been a policeman. Uh, I've grown up in the police world. My father being an NOPD police captain for 36 years, myself being a member of the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office since 1997. Uh, as a narcotics detective, as a road deputy. This is what I enjoyed doing. Uh, I left to pursue a law degree because the reality was I had $100,000 in student loans that I couldn't afford on a police officer's salary. Uh, so I, I went and did that and then ended up getting elected. But my career has always been law enforcement related. I was chairman of that criminal justice committee. So I've not only been the police officer, I've legislated for the police officers. I've defended the police officers in my, my legal career. And, and the sheriff asked me a year ago to come back as the inside legal counsel when there was a previous retirement. I wasn't bumping over anybody. The retirement came and he, he recognized me as the, the person to fill those shoes, uh, which was a hard decision for me to leave the legislature and come back. Um, but it was me coming back home. Uh, I, I enjoy um, wearing this badge, uh, representing the people that I work with every day. And coming back was the, the best move that I have ever made because it was truly me coming home. What can you or will you do differently when you take over, over as the interim sheriff or the acting sheriff on August 31st? Obviously, Newell Norman, a big figure in Jefferson Parish. You have been going with him to various crime scenes. But you know, and most viewers out there watching this know, it's a big difference from going from the number two guy to the number one guy. All eyes are on you now when it comes to law enforcement in Jefferson Parish. What can you and will you do differently? Well, by operation of law, the chief criminal deputy becomes the sheriff. Right. Um, this is not Newell Norman's appointment. Newell Norman's appointment was to make me the chief criminal deputy. Uh, since I've been that person, that automatically happens when he vacates the spot. So I am the sheriff come September 1st. Uh, I will be that person that continues to do what I always do. I still go to every, you know, most of the crime scenes, the major crime scenes. I did that as legal advisor. I did that in my current position. Uh, I will continue to go out and, and make those um, decisions. As the legal advisor, I was in, you know, in part of all those decisions that come across the sheriff's office desk every day. So I, am I ready for the job? Absolutely. Uh, I, I don't 
don't have any doubt in my mind that I can lead this organization because it's not an organization that needs a lot of leading. We have great people that work for our organization and what it needs is somebody like me to be back behind them supporting them uh, because they, they do it themselves. You will not only be running the sheriff's office starting September 1st, you'll also be running for an election here. There's going to be a spring election for the sheriff of Jefferson Parish. You plan on running for that position. Newell Norman said he plans on backing you and supporting you. Some other names have surfaced. Keith Connolly, who's the CAO of Jefferson Parish. John Young, the former parish president. Also, some others could be thinking of this. Is that a trying task to not only have to run law enforcement and be the top cop in Jefferson, but also run for an election as well in the political season? It, to me, it's not a challenge because I have seven months to prove myself. I've been to civic associations this week, which I wasn't planning on being at. Uh, I was planning on being at them, but not in the current position. And what I've asked them is not for their support. I've asked them to, for their patience. They're going to see me over the next seven months of how I act, uh, how I perform form and they're going to know exactly what type of sheriff they're getting with me. Uh, I think they will like what they see. Uh, I, I can, I'll have the opportunity to prove who I am as a sheriff and I believe that they're going to like that and they're going to reward me with that position. I'm not entitled to this. Uh, whether it was a state representative, whether it's a sheriff or any other position, someone will replace Joe Lapinto. I've said that as a state representative, but whether I had four years, whether I had eight years or whether I had 12 years, in this case I gave it up after nine. Somebody was going to replace Joe Lapinto, someone was going to replace Newell Norman, someone was going to replace Harry Lee. Uh, at the end of the day, I am a, I am a person that is filling these shoes for this period of time. I think I'm the right man for the job, but the public will make that decision. What's the biggest need for residents in Jefferson Parish, the area's largest parish, watching this right now from a law enforcement standpoint? We talk about New Orleans. It's the homicide rate, the lack of officers. Those are well-known issues to people watching right now. What do people in Jefferson Parish want from a law enforcement standpoint? They want a very quick response time. When they call 911, they want to be able to have that policeman there. They don't want to be waiting three hours for that crime to be reported. We pride ourselves of having a less than five minute, uh, five minute response time on emergency calls. We are there very quickly because our investigations are only good as those witnesses. And if those witnesses aren't on scene anymore because it took 20 minutes for us to arrive, then we don't have that information. So we get there very quickly in order to so solve crimes. Uh, we um, implement the most effective technology tools around in order to solve our crimes. So instead of an armed robbery being able to get six and seven armed robberies, we catch them after number one and number two. So we prevent number three, four, five, and six from ever getting there. And we're going to continue to do that for the future. Do you have to continue to work closely with places like New Orleans? This has always been, whether it's reality or a criticism, that Crime spills over from New Orleans to outlying parishes, to, to Jefferson, to Plaquemines, to areas that touch us. Newell Norman has mentioned this. The police chief in New Orleans, Michael Harrison, has mentioned this, that criminals know no geographic boundaries. And Jefferson Parish touches New Orleans in various ways. Is that a concern? And do you have to continue to work with New Orleans to make sure that we're safe as one metro area? We always work with New Orleans, whether it's our criminal investigation center or anything else. We work with New Orleans daily uh, to provide them leads. Crimes that happen in Jefferson and parish, obviously those same suspects are committing crimes in Orleans. So we continuously share information and, and we will do so. We need New Orleans to succeed. We need them to succeed. Um, we are all part of this together. Um, Jefferson Parish can't do it alone. It's a, it's a collaborative effort that we, we try to uh, embrace as much as possible. We have different jurisdictional boundaries. There's only so much that we can do, uh, but we try to cooperate as much as possible and, and we have that working relationship. You're running for an election here in the spring, but are you keeping a close eye on the mayor's race in New Orleans to see who gets elected? We're a long way from people actually going into a booth and punching a name, but are you keeping a close eye on that because that could have a big effect on the criminal justice system in New Orleans and the metro area? I, I mean, yeah, I am. I'm intrigued, obviously, but there's a, a, a bunch of candidates that are running for office in that position. I think the, the election itself is going to uh, determine the future of the way the New Orleans Police Department and the city goes. Uh, that's with every election. Uh, that's why you have to look at it and hopefully that they will come to us and, and make some determinations of how much, how much do we want to cooperate, how much do we want to act together. Final question here, has it hit you yet? Obviously, you're a, a local guy. There was a New Orleans cop. Since 1980, only two people have been the sheriff of Jefferson Parish, and they're both 
basically political and law enforcement legends, if you will, Harry Lee and then Newell Norman, you're going to step into those shoes. Has that reality set in yet? It's difficult. It's humbling. Uh, 13 years ago when I left the sheriff's office, um, when I finished my law career, I mean, f finished my law school, um, I was the black shirt and the silver badge working the district in Fat City. Um, day watch. That's who I was. I left this department in order to go, you know, fulfill my, my law school education, right, to continue to, going forward. Uh, it's humbling that I'm back. I would have never imagined that 13 years ago, not only would I be back in this department, but would be sheriff. Uh, the sheriff has obviously thrown a lot on my plate. Um, he has done so for the, not only the last year, but as his attorney for the, the previous years. Uh, I'm humbled by the opportunity, uh, but I know he recognizes, that, as Harry Lee did, is you have to have a succession plan. You, you've got to understand that this is a multifaceted uh, organization. It's not only the law and order that we deal with, it's a large corporation. So you, you need to have the ability to manage our civil division, our tax division, all of the things that come across. It's not just a, a situation of these are the people that we have on the ground. Those are the face of the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office, but the Sheriff's Office and the employees that work for it are so much bigger than that. All right, Chief Deputy Joe Lapinto. Perfect. Soon to be Sheriff Joe Lapinto starting September 1st as Newell Norman, we all know by now, is retiring and will become a TV, or excuse me, a talk radio personality. This is the hot seat. I'm Travers Mackle. Juliana, let's send it back to you at the news desk.